Hi, uh, I'm just going to show um, in a video here some changes I've made to the North Brabant map um, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, some glitches that uh, myself and other people have found on the map um, that were quite annoying, so figured I'd have a play around in Giants Editor and see what I could do. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just go into our North Brabant map here. Uh, obviously, you see I've already unzipped it. Um, so you will need to do that if you plan to make any changes. So we're in the North Brabant map um, and we need to go into our map folder and then go to our Brabant i3d file and open that. And then we'll bring up Giants Editor. It takes a little while to load all the stuff in. There we go just make that a bit bigger. Um, OK, so we can see on the map here, uh, this is the water plane, which is one big water plane covering the entire map. I quite like this idea because um, if you have individual ones it just covers certain areas, but with the bigger one, uh, bigger full covered uh, water plane, Basically, all you need to do is dig a hole, and you get to water. <laughs> That's it. It's quite simple. Um, the only thing it does do, um, which is unavoidable, is things like the slurry pit here, because it's essentially a hole in the ground. The system, um, as you can see, a hole in the ground, automatically creates your water plane. So as you zoom out changes to water because you then get outside of the view range of the slurry texture but you know can live with that um, so yeah moving around uh, you can see that um, these fields here they had this tiny little sort of trench ditch whatever around the outside of the map pretty pointless in my opinion so what I did was to dig it out, make it bigger, um, and with the raising of the water plane as well, um, we now have water in our trenches, ditches, whatever. I um, think it adds something to the map, uh, personal preferences, and all that. Um, yeah, so. Um, kept some of them you know not quite so deep just for looks and personal preference again but uh, you know each their own um, yeah I mean on my system this runs fine but water planes can be quite intensive on your system if you've got a lesser spec computer but um, don't think it really matters that much for this for this map size, um, but just have to see really with your own system how that works. Um, going over to the BGA here, there was uh, under the ground here one of these silo pits, um, one of these, and that caused some massive glitches when you drove into that area over there don't know if it was intended to be that way or whether the original map creator removed the actual upper these parts I forgot to get rid of the other bit I don't know um, uh, some people believe that you should just bury things under the ground that's fine if you want to do that I, you know each their own um, but even if they're under the ground the system still has to render them so for me personally, I just delete them. Um, doesn't seem to cause any issues as far as I can tell. And uh, yeah, allows you to add other things then without affecting, you know, your graphics and all that. Because um, it's one less thing to render, so you can add another thing if you'd like. Take one away, put one in. Um, and this down here 
there was a tip trigger this one was all a bit off centered and too far back so I just basically moved it forward slightly and tried to center it to give a better tip action um, or you didn't have to or should I say you had to come in quite a long way with your bucket before you could actually tip your silage into this area here uh, now it makes it a little bit better um, so yeah moving on um, if we come over to the main farm first um, I moved the excuse me. Moved the mix station from here and put it over here, and widened out this area slightly so that um, you yeah, got a bit more space to manoeuvre around. Um, and I've got rid of a couple of these silage bunkers. Um, for reasons I like the upright silo bunkers silage fermenter things whatever you call them uh, but unfortunately they use um, the universal process kit uh, and because of that you can't place them using giant editor or you can't place them in giant editor it causes a conflict in the Lua file um, and then all you end up with is just massive amounts of errors on your map and the tip triggers don't work and or just causes too many problems and I don't know how to get around that if e or even if there is a way to get around it so all I generally do is when I go into the map first of all is just buy one or two and place them down um, because they are actually placeable items so that's not too bad works out quite well um, and uh, yeah so that's that um, in the center here there was a island which for me was a pain um, primarily because here and here um, see if I can show you those you've got um, so if I can find them might not be able to find them um, you're loading not sure where they are doesn't matter um, but basically what you've got here is um, triggers which are for your reset points um, it was originally right over here to about here to make room for this island which is fine but certain items were being uh, reset with the attach point right up against this so you then have to push it with your combine or whatever implement um, or machinery to turn it so you could attach oh, I found that really annoying so removing this island allowed me to bring out the reset points so now the items will be reset and spawned somewhere between here and here along this line um, again you know personal preference that works for me so um, yeah, I've also opened up this area here um, because this entrance and exit and also the one over here and this one here they're too too small. I mean it works but um, if you've got um, a combine for example a harvester, whatever you want to call it um, with a bigger header but one that you can't tow behind um, and y you know I'm not really into the um, header trailers I find them really annoying they don't the header doesn't lock in properly and I've had so many of them fall off while trying to you know, transport them to fields and what have you so I just couldn't be dealing with that um, so opened up this area here to allow me to just come out with my combine and header attached as one um, and yeah I find that a much better solution um, and I've moved the uh, Coke or lime from over here where the island was again with the fertilizer tank and the sea pallets so got a lot more area here to bring your 
tractor and sprayer or cedar or whatever and if you've got like one of the bigger Amazon sprayers this is much better you've got so much more room to maneuver around um, and you've just got you know that much more room to put your machinery I uh, can't stand cluttered um, farms with irrelevant rubbish in them <laughs> yeah, personal preference but uh, yeah this works for me so um, I've also taken away the um, field here this was field 4 um, and yeah didn't like the idea of that silly little field um, so again opened up this area slightly and done the same again this area or this end of the field uh, I mean obviously you could still cut this grass there's nothing to say you can't do that um, and if you wanted to make it into something else uh, it's there so do what you feel is right for you um, but for me coming out of the farm here with my combine and then trying to get out of this ed entrance exit and this one and this one to come round here into this field was an absolute pain um, and again to get into this field um, which I believe is sugar beets um, just trying to get down these little alleyways and that you know even though these fences aren't collidable um, and again with the trees not collidable um, you know for realist realism coming down here with your combine and header um, running through these just no, it didn't look right so opened up this area here so that I can come from the farm around I could have opened up this but felt that or opened up this area here or whatever or come through here I thought you know that's a bit cheaty so to go out and come back on yourself that way was a better idea um, and I moved this field this was field 4 remember um, and uh, I moved it over here this was all trees just completely enclosed with trees if I recall um, and uh, yeah so got rid of the trees and moved the um, field triggers um, and dimensions and the map indicator over here so now this is field 4 and large grass field uh, the idea behind this was because if you remember the fields um, over here which I'm going to join together I think it's those ones yeah uh, going to join together to make one large field you've got one grass field there and one grass field there which eventually I will lose and this, this farm's quite good or this map's quite good it's got a variety of grass fields around but um, to lose those two I need something to replace them so this was ideal um, I took a bit of a guess on the size um, haven't quite figured out how to work out the hectare calculation for fields um, so yeah just looking at the other sizes of the fields um, uh, came up with what I thought was right which I'll just show you if you're going to user attributes um, I calculated it at 3.2 hectares and calculated the price against that at 95,400 um, if we look at one of these fields um, which is a little bit larger perhaps uh, this one maybe over here yeah 1.59 at 47,700 and rough calculations I came to this this figure right or wrong is what I'm going to go with so there's that um, and yeah going back to the water plane um, I've raised it up so now it's in line with the bridges a bit better um, I quite like the idea of having it up that high makes a purpose for the bridge if you've got your water at a level that you can't drive through it without drowning your t drowning your um, machinery. Uh, whereas before, I think it was quite low, um, and you could do. So, um, and I didn't like the idea of the um, water 
just disappearing off the edge of the map into oblivion um, so for looks I've enclosed the ends off um, and just you know, put some trees there um, and smoothed off the ground and put some grass over it so it just when you're on your tractor coming by in the, on the bridge here and you could look over just for me it just looks better um, yeah and if we follow that th around to the other end again you know looking at the bridges water level is now up to the bridge I quite like that um, and yeah coming over to the weir here we're here <laughs> yeah um, this was pointless in my opinion because the water plane was so low that this thing was spinning around and around um, in mid-air it wasn't even in the water so raising the water plane up I think it's added a bit of realism there um, you know some people may not even notice uh, you know it's not really um, got a use like a fertilizer uh, tank or whatever it's not something you can interact with but um, visually uh, I quite like the maps to if they've got something in it I think it should look like it's there for a reason you know uh, but yeah so coming around I've also done the same to the other end of the map there closed off the the uh, river um, lake whatever um, so if you're driving again across the bridge you look across you're not looking uh, out into oblivion you, you know um, and uh, yeah so that's that um, uh, yeah and uh, um, if we come over I'll just show you this actually um, you've got this road here which just goes off into nowhere the the bush here is just you know um, there something I've put there just so that it you you you, can, you know it's the end of the the road I mean you've got your barriers here but you can drive around them um, so I just wanted to put those there so that you know if you're driving up this end of the map you can look across and you can see yeah it's a dead end you ain't going anywhere <laughs> um, uh, if if you do it venture up here you can see that uh, with the raised water plane just adds a little bit more to it I think personally but so if we go over to our grain silos um, yeah I moved this all around because I didn't like the way it was laid out um, uh, yeah got rid of some bits and pieces in the corners here um, I know others who have played on this map um, I've had issues specifically in this area here I uh, didn't experience it myself but um, for that reason um, and I didn't didn't like the lay layout um, I took the this one which is your standard wheat barley canola and corn and moved it back because it wasn't this far back um, and just moved the hedge and everything else towards the road slightly and then moved all of that back um, and I also moved these things because they were in here originally didn't like that I like the idea of being able to just drive by the field uh, the uh, um, shed uh, what do they call these things I don't know call it a shed um, storage barn yeah that's better and uh, I like to be able to just drive by and look up and see what I've got in my in my uh, storage barn without having to mess about looking in here but you know again whatever works for the individual right uh, yeah so this one this storage barn was over here what a pain didn't like that so I moved it over here and joined it together so now you've just got one big storage barn if you like um, with your additional fruits, your oats, sunflower, rye and so on and I also moved the triggers out slightly because they were so far in that you 
had to reverse your trailer in quite a distance to get the tip trigger action. Um, I'm not all that good at reversing, I will admit that. So for me, um, and also if you're using course play, um, it was just easier to be able to come along and tip it out than doing the forward shunt back, forward shunt back, oh, I couldn't be doing that. Um, so yeah, now this pipe here, originally this only had your four uh, main um, grains listed when you went to, you know, you drive under it, press R. All you got, or you're prompted, was uh, your wheat, your barley, canola, and corn. You didn't get the additional um, grains, fruits. So I added them in. So clicking on the pipe here, which is highlighted in your cinegraph, we will just move that down slightly. Uh, what you're looking for is your silo tip trigger. And if you click on that, this is what your uh, trailer is looking for. Um, you drive under it, your trailer hits this, and then that gives you the action with the R button, or whatever you've um, changed it to, to get the grain out. Yeah, so with this, if I close that down a sec, uh, with this uh, highlighted in your cinegraph, go up to your window, and then go to your user attributes, not your attributes, because your attributes window just shows you um, your um, the position of the item on the map, uh, which is your X, Y, and Z, or your uh, rotation, again, the angle of it on the map or against the map. Um, so, you know, you don't want that for this purpose. Uh, what you need to go into is your user attributes, and with this silo trigger highlighted you then get your field types and in your field types you had wheat, rape, barley, maize but you didn't have the rest of them oh s yeah so you didn't have the rest so you didn't have your sunflower, your oat and your rye um, so all you need to do is just type them in that's it um, making sure you put spaces in between. A lot of things with um, you know, XML uh, require underscores. You can't have gaps between your um, names because the engine won't recognize them like here, it's got an underscore. But in here you actually have gaps, or spaces, I should say. Uh, so you've typed wheat, and then space, then rape, then space, then barley, and so on and so on. But that's it, yeah, so just type in your additional fruit types. Um, I like to just press enter. Um, don't know why. don't think it makes any difference but um, I would recommend to do that anyway. Just by pressing enter on your keyboard um, I think it acknowledges that you've actually made a change. I uh, could be wrong but I like to do it anyway. And then just click save and then once you've clicked save and you're done you can exit out your map and then re-zip it. So I won't, ex I won't save it because um, I don't need to, I've not made any changes. So yeah, we close out, won't save, but you should do. And then go back, and then just go select all. i use WinRAR, and then just click on your add to North Brabant 1.4. And then once it's completed the um, zip file which can take a little while sometimes depending on what you've got in there yeah so once it's completed what you need to do is go into your documents my games farm and sim mods and then just put this in your mods folder I've already got it in here um, 
got so many in here. So yeah, it's already in there, so I won't put it in there again. But that's it, just either drag it over or um, if you use your left mouse and drag it over or use your right and then when you let go you'll be prompted with move here or copy here whatever or you could also cut and then come over to here and go paste and it'll put it in and then it'll actually delete it from this folder and put it in that folder okay so that's it thanks very much